Hi guys, and hello from the hilltop. I'm Waxahachie Blue, and I want to welcome you to my channel, The Plateau Perfectionist. Today's video is my 2023 plan with me for the month of March, and my Archer and Olive 192 uh, GSM dot journal. So I am doing a monochromatic month for the month of March. I'm going to be using this lovely uh, olive green color here from the Zebra Mod Liners Neutral Pack. And we're just going to go ahead and get started. So the quote for the month is the secret to, you know, it would help if I could remember what it said. <laughs> the secret to your future is your daily routines. That's what it is. Um, I thought that was a very good little quote. I also kind of, you know, it has to do with growth and, you know, I wanted to go with green growth. It, it all works out there. And then, and then as for the designs, I did just kind of a geometric and plant type theme. One, because I'm using green. And two, I, I always try to do a very minimalist march. That's just something that I personally enjoy doing. And seeing as how I am doing a very minimalist journal for the entirety of the journal, it, it all just kind of flows well together. I did include just a small mini calendar here at the bottom of the page, which is just a, a basic cutout. I just uh, googled uh, the year 2023 and, and sized it right, and then I actually stuck it on a sticky note, and then stuck the sticky note in there. <laughs> so yes, it's very simple. I, I did use a one alternative color when it comes to any type of coloring, and that was I used a gray, and that was just for a drop shadow on the two-page calendar spread on the following page. So I will wholeheartedly admit I messed up on one of these two spots of plants. So fun fact about these particular zebra mod liners. Zebra mod liners layer very nicely. The problem is, is the more layers that you put on there, the longer it takes for it to dry. So you do, um, I did do a little bit of, through the power of editing, uh, cut out the parts where I had to kind of stand there, or excuse me, sit there and blow <laughs> on these markers to get them to dry. And not only that, but the lapin that I was using for the black was not necessarily cooperating in certain respects, especially where the green ink was thicker. It still worked, but I messed up on this particular bit here, so I had to color in the leaves because otherwise it just kind of looked yucky. And so when I did the second part here, I compared the two. I liked the leaves not filled in. So for the rest of the spreads where there are leaves, I did not color them in. This is the only spot where you'll see colored in leaves like that. I do think it makes for a nice contrast, but it, I really wanted the green to be more of the focus and the leaves just to be a bit of an accent. So the, for the rest of this, the leaves are, are you know, just, just an outline. So here is my two page calendar spread for the month. I do have this one little sticker that is part of some month stickers that I purchased many years ago from I believe either Joann's or Hobby Lobby uh, in the sticker section, scrapbooking section. Uh, and I have never used them per se, I, I've used them very very periodically so I have most of them left and so I, they fit perfectly in this little three dot allotment that I give for the two stripes on either side of the, the Dutch door. So that's I'm just going to continue using them and, and try to keep them, keep up the vibe there. As for the two page calendar spread, I have discussed this in a previous video and I believe it was my February video. So I have a general code breakdown of how I keep this two page calendar spread in the same spot on the page month to month. Um, it is four dot grits dot grids excuse me from the top then there is a single line that is where the days of the week of the week will go and then each of the day grid boxes are six by five six tall five wide because I give an additional uh, line to put the day of the month 
uh, this will not fit every single month because there are a couple of months that usually will have six technical weeks. Um, you know, they're the kinds of weeks where they have that diagonal and they'll put two days in the, in the same box. I hate personally doing that. I'd rather do a horizontal box because the diagonal just cuts this space far too wastefully. So here I am just adding the green and I actually tried to think ahead this time and I did leave the extra little blank space where the last two days of February are. It always makes the month look a little weird but you know it works out in the end. And I did allow just a little bit of overlay in the particular design here at the bottom. Since this particular month does not have the extra space for a note section, I figure if I absolutely need one, I do have that small gap at the top of the month, or I can even write it up at the top. So in order to allot for that, it, I didn't add any type of washi tape or anything like that. This is purely just marker. As for the design in and of itself, it, I went to Pinterest and just started looking at some minimalist aesthetics, especially involving plants. I had something very similar saved on one of my Pinterest boards, and so I just kind of started playing around with it, especially using the geometric shapes, and hence how this became to be. As for doodling the actual vine, it's pretty much just a, a string with some branches, and then each of the branches has anywhere between one to three petals or leaves. If you colored it, you could make them whatever you want, petals or leaves. But since I wanted the geometrics to be the color and the actual vine to just kind of be black and white, I didn't even bother with that. You could technically do it in reverse if you felt inclined, but it's up to you. I also didn't outline the geometrics because I kind of liked them without the outline. I thought that would be too much um, black breaking up the space. Just keep them as is, and if you want to do an outline, do you do you. You see this every month, but this is something that I also do in addition, and this is my one tracker that I really a lot for extra space for. This is my budget tracker. Uh, for those of you who do not know, I am currently doing a no buy, low buy challenge for this particular year. For the first quarter and third quarter of this year, I will be doing a no buy challenge, which means I'm trying to spend as little money as physically possible in order to help pay off my bills a little faster. I had a surgery last year that kind of ate up some of my budget and I'm trying to slowly pay that off. And then as for the second and fourth quarter of the year, I am doing a low buy. That way I can at least allot myself some, some funding to buy Christmas presents during that time of the year, as well as um, a birthday gift for myself if I decide to go that route. This particular spread I set up the same way every time, just because that is the setup, the style that works for me. It's just a rolling total style budget, which includes a spot for date, description of what I purchased, the amount, and then which account the information was pulled out of. Um, I have a couple of credit cards as well as bank savings, all that other stuff, and so this is just a rolling way for me to keep track of how much I'm spending in each month. On to the weeklies. So when I was designing my weeklies, I did notice, and this just happened to be a happy happenstance here, that for the end of each quarter, I would require an extra page in order to make sure that I had all of the days uh, allotted per each month. Now, obviously here, I do my daily, uh, my, my weekly setup. So I have seven days on each page, Monday through Sunday, not all weeks or not all months, complete themselves at the end of each week. So for March here, you'll see the last two days of February because they fall on a Monday and a Tuesday. However, the last month of March, there is, you know, I needed that third page. So to compensate for the extra space, I included at the very last part, or the very last page of this particular spread design, a quarterly check-in 
Uh, I wanted to create this to kind of keep track of how I am doing on some of my goals, some of my habits, um, how my no buy went for the quarter. That's another big reason why I wanted to do a quarterly check-in. And then I just think did my, my lines here for each of these weeks. I could probably have filled in the tabs as well. I mostly just have the tabs for my finger to catch so I can more easily flip the page. I never can get the tabs to be written right, it, it, so I just I stopped writing on the actual tabs. I did draw the tab on the last page just to kind of give it the visual aesthetic. This because I wanted. So here is my quarterly check-in. Um, oh, no, I decided to, to write out my days first. <laughs> I just really did a, a very simple uh, write out here. I just did a, you know, the, the first letter of each of the weeks, followed by the actual date. Hopefully I didn't get any out of order. I, I didn't think I got any out of order. As for that top strip at the top of each week, I will be doing just a small doodle to just kind of fill in space, give it a little bit of a pop of color without uh, taking up too much space because these are not very big wide spaces for me to write things. This is purely for, for bullets and writing down tasks because that's primarily what I use my bullet journal for. Here is my quarterly check-in. I tried to be fancy with my script but it is a bit of a combination of both um, cursive as well as print just because uh, cues in cursive look like number twos and I just think it's very silly. So um, here is my first part, which is victories and successes, and then I have places to work on at the bottom. Uh, I'll fill this in as I feel inclined, and it's just, it's just a personal thing for me to kind of keep track of how things have progressed over the first quarter of the year, what uh, went really well, uh, what necessarily needs some work, and that's primarily all that's on here. On the far right side of the page, however, is my weight tracker because that is how I design my weeklies. I have the weeklies as the, but as the Dutch doors, and then I have the habit tracker on the left-hand side and the weight tracker on the right-hand side, and so I use these very frequently and I hate having them on a designated page where I have to constantly flip back and forth because out of sight out of mind so that's why I keep them right here next to the weeklies so I did include just a little bit of a, a using the green as a highlight just to kind of mark where weekends are it's just to help uh, my brain better allocate what day I'm actually on um, just a bunch of lines and dots can kind of get a little little lost at least for my brain so I always try to highlight the weekends just so I can better designate um, for spatial reasoning. I did include just a little green line here. And then uh, I'd cut out some of the doodling just because it was very repetitive. But primarily what I did was I just kind of drew some, some shapes here up at the top. They kind of both fall in and out of the page. And then on top of that, I just took the my lip pen and I drew some additional um, green vines with leaves. And, and that's it. That I just kind of I changed it up on every single week, so none of them are exactly the same, but it's the same concept throughout all of the weeks. And that's it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop talking and so you can you can finish watching and enjoy the flip through. I appreciate that you took the time to come and, and watch my video. Uh, thank you for stopping by. If you feel inclined, please give it a thumbs up. You can always subscribe if you like my content or, you know, just leave a comment. I appreciate any and all. So uh, thank you again. Uh, you can enjoy the video and I'll see you later. Bye.